Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video, I will be introducing you to the flanger effect. Now, flangers aren't strictly intended to add stereo width to a mono sound, but many do include options that will do just that. This is why I've included flangers in this part of the tutorial. The flanger effect produces a pretty distinct sound that is hard to compare to anything other than a phaser. The best way I know how to describe it is that it adds a lot of movement to the sound. The character of this movement can change from a subtle whooshing effect to complete madness depending on your settings. Because it often changes the sound so much, I will usually use a flanger in the sound design stage rather than mixing. So if I know I want a sound to be stereo, I may see how a flanger sounds. Now keep in mind that the line between sound design and mixing is blurred, but I like to keep the mixing portion as basic as possible in my mind. So the way it works is pretty simple. When your original sound is sent through the flanger, a delayed signal is created. The time of the delay is very slight and set in milliseconds. The delay time is also modulated with an LFO. This delay creates a phasing or comb filter effect when played with the original signal, and the modulation of the delay time creates movement of this effect. You will also have the option to feed the output signal back through the input. The more you do this, the more whistly your sound can get. And if you think about microphone feedback, it's essentially a very similar thing that's happening, so it can give you those high resonances. Now, these are just the very basic functions of a flanger, and many flangers can do much more than this, or offer more variations of these basic functions. In the rest of this video, I will be taking a look at the parameters of the fruity flanger, and many of them will apply to other flangers as well, but some may be a bit different. Maybe the fruity flanger has more options, or maybe your flanger has more options, so it's definitely worth checking out the manual of your flanger as well to see how the information in the rest of this video applies to the flanger that you use. Okay, so in the fruity flanger, you have a few different options. And I'm going to start off just by listening to the original signal. So right now you can hear that the flanger isn't changing the saw wave at all. And what the delay parameter does is it sets the delay time of that wet signal. So if you look at the oscilloscope, you'll kind of see this saw wave broken up into two different saw waves. And that's just because the delay offsets the wet signal from the original dry signal. And now as I look at a few of the other parameters, I'm going to turn off the dry signal. So this is just the delayed signal right now. And what the depth parameter allows me to do is it will delay the signal even more. And now the LFO I mentioned earlier fluctuates the delay time between the originally set delay and that delay time plus the depth time. So right now it will fluctuate between a delay of 8.3 milliseconds and approximately 16 milliseconds. And the speed of that LFO is controlled by the rate parameter. So you can see that in the oscilloscope, the wet signal is kind of moving back and forth in time. 
and that's because it's fluctuating between the original delay time and then the delay time plus that depth time. Now what the phase knob does is it changes the left and the right LFO phase relation. So it doesn't change the waveform, but it changes the LFO between the left and the right channels. So you'll see that when the phase is zero degrees, that means they are on the same phase. The left and the right channel move together. But if I offset that phase by a certain amount, you'll see that now they don't move together in the same way. And if you set that phase at 180 degrees, they will be completely off in terms of their movement. You can see that one is moving forwards while the other moves backwards and vice versa. So I can set that from anywhere between 0 and 360 degrees. If I set it at 360 degrees, it's all the way back at the original and they will move together again. Now the damp parameter just filters off some of the high frequencies of the wet signal. And the shape parameter changes the shape of that LFO between a sine wave and a triangle wave. So if you pay attention to the movement with it set at a sine wave, you'll see that when I put it all the way to triangle, it will move a little bit differently. You know, it moves more linearly and the transition is less smooth between forward movement and backward movement. So you can set that anywhere on the spectrum between being a sine wave and a triangle wave. And the fade parameter will decide how much of the output is fed back into the input. And you can hear that when I increase the feedback, the sound gets a lot more resonancy, and, and that's just because I'm feeding that wet signal back through the input. And then the invert feedback parameter inverts the polarity of the feedback. So it's just inverted the polarity of the feedback, and it's kind of hard to see uh, on the feedback, but the invert wet parameter does the same thing except for the wet output. So you can see with it off, the saw wave slants in a diagonal this way. And if I turn that inversion on, it's going to invert the polarity so that this peak up here goes down here, and then the peak down here goes up there. So the diagonal will be reversed because I'm flipping it vertically. And then finally you have the dry, wet, and cross level knobs. And these just change how much of the signal that they mention is put through the output. So I've been showing you all of these effects with only the wet because it's a lot easier to see them with that wet soloed. But the real flanging sound comes from combining that wet signal with the dry signal and possibly this cross signal. So the dry signal is just the original input. The wet signal is the delayed and modulated input. 
And then the cross is a phase inverted version of the wet. And it's not inverted polarity wise. It is the LFO that is inverted between the left and the right channels. So this is a little bit hard to display, but I'll try to display it with a very low rate. So you can see if I quickly change between the wet and the cross, you'll be able to see that the left and the right channels will travel in different directions when I make that change. And if I have them both on, you'll kind of see that there are two different saw waves and they're traveling in opposite directions in both the left and the right channel. So the cross is a little bit hard to display, but hopefully you understand that. So that was just a technical look at the parameters of the fruity flanger effect. And many of these parameters will relate to other flangers as well. But how you actually use a flanger and what kind of sounds from a flanger that you like will depend on your personal taste. So I definitely recommend you, you know, check out different presets or play around with the parameters and see what kind of cool sounds you can make using that flanger. And sometimes if you keep the parameters pretty simple, it can just add a nice bit of stereo image to your sound in a different way than the Haas effect or certain other techniques that I'll be explaining in this section of the tutorial.